Today's gospel reminds us that wealth is fading, while faith is eternally rewarding. And what truly matters is much more valuable than what treasure we amass. October 12, 1884, 140 years ago, the very first Mass was celebrated at St. Mary's Church. It was a bilingual Mass, English and Portuguese. We continue forward 104 years into our mission. The story of this parish, which predates so many moments and milestones, the lives of thousands and thousands of Catholic families, the colorful priests and nuns who built up this community, all of this brings us to this moment, 140 years to the day later, where we will again celebrate in two languages, where we continue the work of so many to grow and evangelize, and where our families and the efforts we make now will continue this story for our children and the generations to come. Let us roll up our sleeves and do the work needed to ensure that 140 years from now, the story of St. Mary of the Immaculate Conception, the little downtown church at the center of the county and the crossroads of the Bay Area, is a story of ever-deepening faith and love and a little church that stood tall and did big things. We are here to know and to love Christ and to make Christ better known. Please stand and welcome those around you. Good afternoon, Father. It's good to be back home with you again. I'm glad and grateful that I could get away for a couple of days to walk in the footsteps of St. Paul in Greece and Turkey. It was a good experience, a God experience. I'm grateful. As we celebrate our 140 years of uh, presence today, and we will be kicking off the Jubilee celebrations the 8th of December. Let's pause for a while to give God thanks. We have received much in the past and God promises much in the future. So grateful for the past and hopeful towards the future, let us move. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them and replied, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I prayed and prudence was given to me. I pleaded and wisdom came to me. My dear sisters and brothers, today as we celebrate 140 years of the beginning or the origins of our parish community and we will begin a year-long celebration on the 8th of December. The readings of the day invite us to take a closer look at wisdom, at prudence. And I ask myself, what is prudence? What is wisdom? A young man ran up to his rabbi and said, Rabbi, tell my brother to share his inheritance with me. And the rabbi, a wise old man, took the young man by the arm and led him up the flight of steps to the second floor of the house, made him stand behind a window made of glass and asked him, tell me, young man, what do you see? And the young man said, I see children playing in the streets. What else do you see? Oh, I see men and women going off to work. Don't you see anything else? Oh, I see my brother. And the rabbi went into the house and brought a can of silver phosphate and with a brush painted the rear side of the window which instantaneously turned into a mirror and asked the young man, Now tell me young man, what do you see? Rabbi, I see myself. Don't you see children playing in the streets? No, Rabbi. How about those women and men who are going off to work? I don't see them, Rabbi. I see myself. And your brother, don't you see your brother? Rabbi, I see only myself. And the Rabbi looked lovingly into the eyes of the young man and said, This is what happens when a little bit of silver comes between you and your brother. You see only yourself. My dear sisters and brothers, this is wisdom. Realizing that when a little bit of silver comes between you and your brother and your sister, you see only yourself. And the readings of the day point out to us that when a couple of things, relationships and persons and conveniences come between us and our God, we see only ourselves. 
I came across a very interesting statistics. You know, we Americans give. We give to charities. We give to our children. And we give also to our church. And the statistic says that practically everyone gives 2.5 of percentage of their earnings. And I ask myself, now, families are different. Their earnings are income different. Their incomes are different. There are families that earn just 15,000 or 30,000. And there are families that earn 250,000. How come everybody gives 2.5%? After all, people who earn have more disposable income. You agree or not? And yet, we give just what the other gives. And so today, the question that comes our way is this. When a little bit of silver comes between us and our brother, our sister, do we see only ourselves? When a little bit of money comes between you and your God, do you see only yourself or do you see your God? Now tithing is 10%. I know that nobody talks to you about money, at least not in the past. But I like to talk about money because Jesus speaks about money the maximum number of times next only to the kingdom of God. And when one gets upset, when he or she is being talked about by money, that means they really need to listen to it and go deeper into that question and say, why do I get upset? Why do I get irritated? Why do I get angry with the creature? Because the talk of money is spiritual. It leads us to giving. It leads us to open ourselves up. Because we know that the heavier the purse, the tighter the string. And so today, the Lord says, loosen up. Give. After all, all that you have is what has been given to you. Give without counting the cost. Because charity that does not hurt the giver is no charity at all, Pope Francis would say. Today, I'm not just talking about money alone. Think of whatever comes between you and your God. It could be convenience. It could be luxury. It could be a relationship. It could be an ambition. It could be an aspiration. It could be a dream, a design. Whatever it is, when something comes between you and your God, between me and my God, do you and I see only ourselves or our God? We give to our church. And once a year, we also give to the bishops of me. After all, it's not for the bishop. The bishop uses it to continue the work of building of God's kingdom in the diocese and beyond. And how generous are we? My sister and brother, a good number of us make an attempt to give 10%. I do. And so I'd like to talk to you about this. Think of your relationship with God. Do you draw closer to Him every day, every weekend? As you come for Mass, do you go back a little more closer to God, a little nearer to God, a little more intimate with God? Or do your problems, do the pain, the inconvenience, the discomfort, the loss of your dream, all that come between you and your God. Forget about money. Wrestle, let's wrestle with this one question. When something comes between us and our God, it could be a good thing or a thing that is not so good. 
it could be something pleasant or unpleasant it could be honor and glory or it could be dishonor it could be shame or guilt when they come between us and our god do we see only ourselves or do we see god to conclude this is wisdom leaving the many and choosing the one this is wisdom not to let anything come between us and our god because god comes running towards us with his arms wide open this is wisdom leaving the many and choosing the one this is wisdom leaving the created stuff and creatures and going for the creator and so i ask you do you let something or someone or your own ambition and dreams come between you and your god or when something comes between you and your god you push that aside and you are able to see your god if so then you have been blessed with prudence you have been given wisdom give god thanks if not let us remember you and i that when something comes between us and our god we need to push that aside and see god and not just ourselves that is wisdom that is discipleship that is knowing and loving christ and making him better know that's what it means to be a disciple a christian let's pray for this I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, as we strive to please God above all things, Let us turn to Him with our prayers and petitions to help us on our spiritual journey. For the Church, that the Catholic Church continues to be a beacon of charity for the world moving beyond health care and education, to leading the way in resolving real poverty and food insecurities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world peace. That we set aside conflict and greed and invest instead on the well-being of all people. That peace settles on the Middle East and Ukraine. And that the world comes to the aid of those who have suffered great loss in these wars. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our nation. That all citizens recognize the power of our democracy and act to protect it. That we are tireless in protecting and lifting up the underprivileged and marginalized. And that we act with compassion towards refugees and the displaced and welcome them as we would Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For indigenous people everywhere, that their rights, dignity, culture, and history is protected and recognized for contributing to humanity and that they achieve the peace and equality.
equality which they deserve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the victims of natural disasters, particularly those impacted by Hurricanes Helene and Milton, that they are comforted and receive what they need, and that these brothers and sisters are returning to peace and security in their lives through the generosity of all Americans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the sake of body, mind, or spirit, and for those who care for them, that the mercy and healing of Christ be generously poured out for them, and that those who care for them are strengthened and blessed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the departed, that they are eternally joyful and at peace in the presence of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For St. Mary's parish, the parish we love, on the 140th anniversary of our first Mass, that the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the gifts and graces we receive through sacraments work together to continue to build up the Kingdom of God in Walnut Tree, and that we successfully forge a path which allows our congregation to effectively provide spiritually for our children and younger generations to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Virgin Berlin, for whom we offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the former pastors who minister in our midst, those living as well as the ones who are deceased, and in a special way for the Lord and Sidra, the first pastor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As the ashes come up, I'd like to thank you for your generosity towards our parish as well as the bishops of peace. May God bless you. Our offertory hymn can be found on hymn number 606. Mm -hmm.
Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily breaks of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as a joyful celebration we acclaim. Taking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Virgil Berlin, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like this, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with St. John Vianney, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co wives to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, 
that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your son so you may make us sharers of his divine nature through Christ our lord amen, amen. just a little reminder that next saturday we have the international food festival so bring your friends and family and try to connect with your fellow parishioners then during the homily i remember making a mention of tithing as 10% that may be too scary start with 3% and then try to go progressively give percentage wise progressive wise in a sacrificial way and we will get there do what you can but remember to do it with joy because god always loves a cheerful giver otherwise he doesn't accept it he doesn't need it so give it with joy and then god will bless you for that and then so um because it is the jubilee year we have decided to usher in the celebration proper from the 8th of december and continue it to next uh, december 8 we want to build up a momentum in our parish and see how we can draw the youth and the youngsters the gospel of the day was about jesus showing the right path to a young man think of how you and i could not only grow deeper but also grow our church wider bring our children i know you want to pass on the faith but i ask you to please look for them talk to our children our children's children and pray that god may bless us with an increase in attendance the lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen the mass is ended go announce the gospel of the lord thanks, thanks be to god. to god our closing hymn is hymn number 584 Thank you.